So this is the fourth of the four basic financial statements for an entity, the statement of cash flows. Now, at first blush, it might seem like this is unnecessary or redundant because you might be thinking, well, the income statement tells me the results of my operations for a particular period of time, in this case, the year of 2017. And in some respects, that's true. However, when we look at and explore uh, at a later date, we're gonna look at accruals and deferrals. So at a very high level, what that means is that there will be revenues that are recognized and uh, depicted on the income statement that may or may not have yet flowed through the company's cash accounts. There also can be expenses on the income statement that may have been paid at a previous date or may be paid in the future. So the takeaway is this, the net income at the bottom of your income statement is not equal to cash flow. Those will be two different numbers for accrual basis companies. That's why the statement of cash flows is so critical because cash is the lifeblood of an organization. Without cash, the company cannot pay its suppliers, cannot pay its employees, cannot pay its other obligations. So it's very critical for us to have a report or a statement that explains where is cash coming from and where is it going. Now, I'm actually gonna start at the bottom of this statement. Just like with the statement of retained earnings, the statement of cash flows is actually reconciling the beginning and ending balances of one of the elements of the balance sheet. So what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, cash at the beginning of the year was $231,000. Cash at the end of the year was only $20,000. Now, you might look at that and you might think, holy cow, the company, its cash balance declined by $211,000. That's a pretty big uh, decrease. And you're right, it is a big decrease. But let's look at the reasons for that. Now, a company's activities can really be divided into or among three distinct categories. There are operating activities, there are investing activities, and finally, there are financing activities. Now, the operating activities are the day-to-day -day activities of a company. These are the things, while maybe they aren't paying these cash amounts or receiving these cash amounts every day, but the cash flows relate to things that are pretty much happening every day. So for a business, this is a coffee house, I'm pretty sure that you would receive cash from customers on a daily basis. That doesn't mean that the customers have to pay with dollar bills and coins. That could simply be credit card receipts or other payments, uh, Venmo or PayPal or whatever, but this is cash coming in from the customers. Cash payments to suppliers and to employees. Now. Obviously, we don't pay our employees every day. I'm, I haven't uh, come across any businesses that have daily payrolls. Uh, usually, companies pay their employees every week, every other week, twice a month, something like that. So we might only be paying our employees two or three times per month, but we're incurring this cash expense rateably throughout the year or throughout the month. Okay, So it's a day-to-day type of um, activity that results in the use of cash. Cash payments for interest is just another little example here. Now, what we see at the bottom line of this particular section is that cash flow provided by operating activities was $159,000. One of the things you wanna look at when you're trying to assess the company's health is does it generate a positive operating cash flow? It is possible that maybe the company has a bad year or there are some timing differences and the cash flow from operating activities could actually be negative, but that won't work on a sustained basis. In order for a company to be a viable going concern, it needs to generate operating cash flows on a pretty consistent basis. Now, let's look at the investing section. Investing activities really involve buying and selling long-term assets. I'm gonna keep it simple and just talk about property, plant, and equipment right now. So in this example, we have purchase of equipment. It's a coffee house. 
Maybe they bought a new oven or a new espresso machine or some cash registers or something like that, perhaps new furniture. But what we're seeing here is the company spent $270,000 of cash. So this is actually cash leaving the organization. It is possible to have a positive cash flow here. For example, if the company were selling old equipment, whatever proceeds from selling that equipment would be a cash inflow. But as we take a look at this company for this particular year, investing cash flow is negative. So they spent money. Now finally, the financing section. I like to think about the financing section as how did the company obtain money but not from its customers? Think about a baby company, a brand new company. It has nothing. Just like a baby, when it's born, comes into this world, it has absolutely nothing. And it needs, to, uh, it needs the care and nurturing of parents to provide resources and then grow into a full-grown adult. Same thing with a company. If you form a brand new company, it owns nothing. It has no cash, it has no assets, no equipment, nothing. So what happens is we're going to receive funds potentially from the owners. So if we issue common stock, shareholders contribute that capital and now that money belongs to the corporation and we can start to do things with it. Uh, not listed in this brief example, but another possibility would be um, borrowing money. So proceeds from uh, long-term debt Think about that as a bank loan. That would also be a source of cash for a company potentially. And that's actually a fundamental decision. Should you issue stock? Should you borrow from a bank or from some other lender? Or should you use some mix of those two? We'll talk about that later in the course. Now, those are the two main ways that co companies receive cash during the financing um, activities. They either borrow money or issue stock. Then we have the repayment of debt. So that's money leaving the company. So at one point you borrowed some money. Now you are making principal repayments. That's a use of cash. And remember those dividends? And those of you uh, who are really astute might be remembering that we saw the payment of dividends on the statement of retained earnings just a few minutes ago. So when a company pays dividends, that's also a financing activity. What we can see here is that the financing cash flows were actually negative, okay? Now that doesn't necessarily mean something bad. I mean, look what they did. They paid some dividends to the owners. As long as that's consistent with the company's long-term strategy, that's a good thing. And they repaid long-term debt. Generally conceived as a good thing to have less debt. So one of the things you want to look at with the statement of cash flows is assess the overall health. Operating cash flow is positive. We, we use some money to purchase equipment. That could be good or bad. As long as it's a responsible uh, purchase and we think that that will contribute to the long-term health of the company and the company's ability to generate a profit, then that may not be a bad thing. In fact, one of the things you want to be cautious about is if investing cash flow is positive, that could be a sign that the company is experiencing trouble because that could mean that it is selling its equipment, its buildings, and its other long-term assets that may in the future jeopardize its ability to remain a viable business. Finally, the financing section, we can't say if positive or negative is either good or bad. You really need to make that decision uh, in the context of the company's overall strategy and position. Uh, in this case, they paid dividends, they paid down some debt, may not be bad. Overall, when you combine these three sections, so take the investing, or the operating, investing, and financing, combine those together, you're either going to have a net increase or a net decrease in cash. In this case, it decreased. And that $211,000 decrease perfectly explains why cash went from $231 down to $20,000 on the balance sheet.